Hello fellow PC gamers. Finally we're getting the Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection on PC, released on October 19th this year. We have some worries about this beloved game to be ported on PC, since the PC port is handled by Iron Galaxy, an outsourced third-party company hired to do the work. This company does not enjoy the greatest reputation with some of their earlier PC ports, such as the Arkham Knight in June 2015, which was a very poor port and didn't run very well at all, on any PC system. They did fix that game later on, but now there are doubts floating around the internet, people fearing they might not succeed in porting this beloved game on PC in a proper state. This is why, as Sony sent me an early copy of the game, I was very much interested in the performance aspect on PC. So thank you Sony PlayStation for sending me this early copy of the game, so that I can test it properly before release. On that note, take all the information and performance data in this video with a grain of salt. This is the pre-release version of the game, however, these tests are running with the latest Nvidia drivers, version 522.25, released specifically related to the DLSS 2 updates for this title, so the performance data should be very close to the release version of the game. Some minor fixes and improvements might take place for the release version, so keep that in mind. couple of noteworthy details about the game and these tests I've done. First off, you cannot run this pre-release version in exclusive full screen mode. This is a bit weird, to be honest, and unfortunate since usually you get a bit better overall performance with an exclusive full screen. But this time around, it's all done in borderless window mode. Secondly, I noticed that changing the display settings such as DLSS and FSR in-game without restarting the game in between will give you impaired performance, and sometimes it seems like parts of the changes will not take place unless you restart the game after each change. So keep that in mind as well, since your mileage will vary greatly if you do not restart the game after changing the display settings. Thirdly, a small and quick tip related to the previous note. You can skip the splash screen in the beginning by tapping spacebar repeatedly when you see this Sony Interactive Entertainment Presents screen. This will save you a lot of time and frustration when restarting the game while trying to find your preferred display settings. And lastly, here are the settings. As said, borderless window, DLSS and FSR are here, both at 100 sharpness, and of course VSync off and no motion blur. And here you can see that I'm running the game with ultra settings in all of these tests. So what I'm going to show in this video is as follows. My main setup is an AMD 5800X CPU, 32 gigs of 2 times 16 gigs dual rank memory running at 3600 MHz, an RTX 3080 with a minor overclock, and the game is installed on a 1TB NVMe SSD. With this main setup, I will only show the performance in 4K, since that is enough to show the performance on a high-end PC like this. You're obviously going to get much better performance in 1440p, and I doubt anyone would run games with a setup like this in 1080p. My secondary setup, which I bought for my 4-year-old son to start getting familiar with computers, is an i5-10400F, 16 gigs of memory at 3200 MHz, an RTX 3070 also with the minor overclock, and the game is once more installed on a 512 gigs NVMe SSD. For this secondary setup I have both 4K and 1440p performance data to show you, as 1440p is better suited for a lower budget setup like this, however, 
4K gaming works often really well with the 3070, so I wanted to have that data here as well. So, let's get into the performance data and see how it runs. So, what can we see in these numbers? First I want to tell you that the game is not running too well in native 4K, even with this beast of a PC. Yes, I get steady above 60 FPS in this static scene, but while playing and running around the FPS drops well below 40 FPS at times. However, with the DLSS and FSR I get a much better experience. The DLSS quality mode looks pretty much identical to the native 4K, but runs around 40-45% to better, offering well above 90 frames per second in most scenes, and hence gaming on this PC with that setting is my cup of tea. Runs really smooth and looks amazing, and very rarely in some specific scenes or locations drops shortly below 60 FPS. And what comes to the other DLSS modes? The balance setting gives 61% better FPS, the performance setting gives 70% better FPS, and the ultra performance setting gives a whopping 110% better FPS when compared to the native 4K. With the FSR modes, the results are nearly identical, with only some minor differences that you will not notice while playing the game. One thing you can clearly see in this footage is the fact that even at higher frame rates, the 5800X CPU is doing almost nothing. With a closer look at the threads, you can see that there are only a couple of CPUs doing all the work at any given time. Meaning there is definitely something wrong with the CPU workload optimization in this game at least with the higher tier 8 to 16 core CPUs. I say this because the lower tier 6 to 12 core i5 CPU is actually doing a lot more work per thread, so this is most likely something they will try to fix for the release of the game, at least one can hope. All that said and done, let's jump to the secondary system performance numbers.
As you can see, the game is running surprisingly well on this lower budget PC as well. Not that a 3070 is necessarily a budget GPU, but still the performance is very solid with the lower spec PC. The 4K performance is obviously a bit on a worse side, but with DLSS and FSR, you can still easily get the game running at steady 60 frames per second. Once again, the differences between FSR and DLSS are rather minimal, meaning both of them are working really well and offer a great boost in performance. So even if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, the FSR 2.0 offers a great tool for anyone to boost those FPS numbers with a rather small image quality loss. And then the CPU workload issue. As you can see here, the i5 is doing a lot of work. The game is running here at 4K DLSS Ultra Performance setting. So at around 100 to 120 FPS, we are starting to hit a CPU bottleneck. But the game is still running very well overall. I hope they fix the higher tier CPU workload problem for the release version, even though it didn't seem to have much impact on performance. All in all, this PC port seems to be done very well. It's running better than I expected on both of my setups. Looks like the yeah. That's Libra, the scales of justice. That's an interesting choice for a bunch of pirates. Okay, let's give this a shot. Oh, Ben Sesame. I'm a treasure. Josh. <laughs> well, nice view. No treasure, though. No, but... Look, you see those crosses? Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, is that a cave? Right below? Yeah, I think Avery's trying to tell us where to go next. There's one problem, though. Going back that way means we have to go back toward the cathedral. And back towards Rafe. Shit. Well, let's not keep him waiting. And I can happily report to all of you that the worries we had about this PC port have been misplaced. Those things look sturdy to you. Sturdy enough. At least this pre-release version on my PCs is running exceptionally well. And DLSS 2.0 and FSR 2.0 are both working as intended, offering great performance boost to any and all PC gamers. Oh, hey look, oh crap. Ha. Remember, extra careful. Thanks. Okay. Okay, we're good. We're good. I wish you all the best times with this classic game on PC. Have fun, everyone. See you in the next video.